let's check out what happened with Starbucks this week. I don't know if Savvy covered this, but not very many people did because not very many people talk about what happens with the NLRB. But there was a historic mm -hmm. labor ruling which slams, quote, egregious and widespread misconduct by Starbucks. Another indie media award honoree, Common Dreams, good outlet. Once in a while, little to the Democratic hopeful side, little to the optimism side that we're a little doomery, but I still think they do great work. Jessica Corbett's one of the best member of the all-star team. So this is... There we go. There's our indie media awards sound, sound effect. <laughs> so yep. building on a series of blows to Starbucks on Wednesday, the federal administrative law judge, a federal administrative law judge, found the coffee giant committed, quote, hundreds of unfair labor practices at stores and in, in and near Buffalo, New York, the origin of the national unionization wave. The wave. In a lengthy ruling, the NLRB judge, Michael A. Rosas, called out the Seattle-based company, like we said, for egregious and widespread misconduct, demonstrating a general disregard for the employee's fundamental rights. That's pretty strong language. The judge ordered Starbucks to cease a long list of anti-union activities, rehire illegally fired employees, reimburse those impacted by unlawful conduct, rescind disciplinary disciplinary actions, and reopen closed stores. How they order them to do that, I don't know. But according to Rebecca Jivan, an, an associate professor of labor studies at Rutgers, told the WAPO that, quote, to order a company to reopen stores that it closed should be embarrassing for Starbucks. Well, yes, but I'm guessing they're going to fight it. The judge also ordered a meeting or meetings scheduled to ensure the widest possible attendance during which a notice to employees and an explanation of rights will be read by CEO Howard Schultz, Senior VP of Operations Denise Nelson, or an NLRB agent. I guarantee you Howard Schultz is not going to read that. A video of the reading must also be distributed to workers electronically or by mail. In an emailed statement to Bloomberg, Starbucks said that, quote, we believe the decision and the remedies order are inappropriate given the record in this matter and are considering all options to obtain further legal review. Of course you are. Of course they're going to appeal it. The outlet noted that rulings mm -hmm. by NLRB judges can be appealed to labor board members in Washington and can be appealed in federal appeals court. The agency can order policies changed and workers reinstated, but lacks authority to hold executives personally liable or make companies pay punitive damages for violations. Nor can they actually make them open, right. reopen a new store. Meanwhile, again, meanwhile, Starbucks employees from a, from the area and across the United States celebrated the quote unquote historic ruling. Local organizer barista Michael San, Sanabria declared that after waiting through months of stalling tactics and the slow wheel of justice to turn, this will reinvigorate and re-energize the momentum of this movement. Well, I certainly hope he's right. Gary Bonadonna, that's a funny name. Is that a uh, manager of the Starbucks <laughs> Workers United Rochester That's Regional Joint board, board? All right, said that, quote, when workers launched their organizing campaign in the summer of 2021, we could never have imagined the length Starbucks would go to to try to stop employees from exercising their legal right to organize, unquote. Well, clearly you didn't understand Howard Schultz, you didn't understand Starbucks, and you didn't understand Wall Street and big business. So this guy I mean, says... Wait till we get to Gary Bonadonna the third. Gary says that you this know? ruling proves that what we've been saying all along, Starbucks is the poster child of union busting in the United States, as is, as is Amazon. Quote, we are thrilled, yep. okay, that the, that the company's being held accountable for their actions and will continue to fight until every Starbucks worker wins the right to organize. Very flowery, very strong, but let's see what happens. The ruling came after dozens of white-collar well, Starbucks workers... From Bonadonna. Belladonna. Right. What? Um, so, dozens of white-collar workers on Wednesday endorsed a letter calling out the company for requiring them to return to the office and interfering with the unionization efforts at stores nationwide. Hmm. Also at Wednesday, on Wednesday, Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee Chair Bernie Sanders announced next week that the panel will vote on whether to subpoena Howard Schultz, who has refused to testify voluntarily. Tough day for Starbucks and its CEO. Of course. Right? And that's what More Perfect Union, which is Face mm -hmm. Shakir, who was Bernie's campaign manager, he started More Perfect Union after he left the campaign. 
great outlet. They really are. Right. Um, they might want to consider not engaging in constant illegal union busting. And I actually grabbed a copy of the tweet that Starbucks Workers United had put out. Um, Quote, in a historic decision, Administrative Law Judge Michael A. Rosas of the NLRB issued his 204-page decision finding Starbucks violated federal law, federal labor law, hundreds of times in Buffalo, New York alone. Um, and I, this was a whole thread, so instead of putting it out as tweets, I grabbed a thread reader. In the sweeping decision, he ordered several mm -hmm. rare remedies reserved for the most extreme cases, including reopening the uh, Buffalo store Starbucks closed in retaliation for union activity, ordering them to bargain with the union at its Camp Road location, even though the union lost the election there due to the irredeemable nature of Starbucks violations. These are more specifics about what happened. I love how those are like extreme measures. Like, you know. Well, extreme that a government um, agency is forcing a private company to do it, yes. That they have to reinstate seven workers I mean, that, that they illegally terminated in retaliation for their union activity. And yes. Their name. Yeah, that's somehow extreme. Like, you yeah. know, again, Requiring, seems like normal stuff to make a company do. Right. Requiring them to post you know? a 13-page notice of their violations in all of its stores in the U.S. for the duration of the national organizing campaign. Mm, I like that. Requiring them to post the same notice on all yeah. platforms it communicates with employees across the country, including text message, email, and its own intranet platforms. They've got to tell everyone. It's requiring him to be present for a notice, reading, okay? Now, I I didn't read that he has to be present. It could be him, an NLRB person, or a VP, and distributing a recording of the notice, right. reading to all Starbucks employees paying dozens of Buffalo area workers back pay and consequential damages for Starbucks retaliatory actions. They didn't say that in a common dreams article. So I'm glad we read this, including cutting their hours, withholding promotions, denying transfer requests amongst a laundry list of other violations. So that's awesome. Um, shout out support solidarity with all our brothers and sisters over at Starbucks. Um, baristas are people too. And baristas are hard workers. They're fucking really hard workers, actually. And they put up with an inordinate amount of shit from the general public. So I give them a ton of credit.